leaving the Sherburne subway station disguised as the Gay Zombie Cannabis Consumers Association I to infiltrate and strike the dark forces of the Toronto Homosexual Shame Parade and bring about a glorious victory for the gospel of Jesus Christ by delivering 3,000 zombie safe sex packages to the parade goers, end of quote. Mr. Wetcott then quoted from the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians, and I'm not going to quote it, it's in the, it'll be in the published version. Mr. Wetcott commented on several aspects of the parade. He mentioned a Black Lives Matter protest, including a demand for affirmative action for black, quote, black sodomites, end of quote. He posted several pictures of the participants and himself and associates. He described his actions as truth assault. He also posted a photograph of another associate handing out copies of the flyer. He described the photograph. Quote, here is one of my commandos delivering biblical, medical, and sociological truth on the harm of homosexuality. Sadly, in order to deliver this much-needed truth, he had to disguise himself as a gay zombie because the parade was too intolerant to accept him as an out-of-the-closet Christian man who speaks the truth about homosexuality. End of quote. Mr. Wetcott quoted the book of Joshua on his blog. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. End of quote. Professor Farrow testified that the expression Christian commando is not something one finds in the scripture. The concept of going undercover to spy is not common, however, is not common, but does, however, exist in the quote from Joshua 2.1. Mr. Whitecott also posted multiple photographs of naked or nearly naked pride goers. Two of the photographs showed pride goers alongside children. He quoted children, he noted children exposed to the, quote, disordered sexuality on display at the shame parade, end of quote. He quoted from the Gospel of, of Luke. Again, I won't quote this particular Gospel, it is in the published version. Professor Farrow testified that this is a scriptural there is a scriptural reference in Matthew where Jesus tells his disciples that those who lead innocent children astray will face harsh consequences. In my respectful view, the blog is not evidence that Mr. Whitecott intended to promote hatred. There is no doubt that Mr. Whitecott used disparaging language in describing the parade. He called it the Toronto Homosexual Shame Parade. He referenced Black Lives Matter protesters as, quote, black sodomites, end of quote. He posted pictures of, quote, naked sodomites, end of quote. He also noted that the group was, here I quote again, embraced by the parade and the police. We had no opposition to the delivery of much needed three of the much needed 3,000 zombie safe sex packages, which contained accurate truth on the harms of the homosexual lifestyle and the good news that Jesus died for the redemption of homosexuals, end of quote. The good news, of course, is a reference to the message of Jesus. Mr. Whitecott used the blog to criticize the pride and all it stands for. For example, he posted a photograph of a group of marchers, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is is a satirical or, is apparently a satirical organization. Indulgences appear to refer to the old Roman Catholic practice of trading absolution for sin of sin for money. One of the marchers had a picture of Christ crucified on his crotch. Mr. Whitecott criticized the organization for showing hatred and disrespect to Christians. Again, and with respect, he was within his rights to do so. I find it puzzling that if Mr. Whitecott intended to promote hatred, he would have distributed the flyers to the very group he intended to promote hatred against. I cannot imagine an audience less receptive to his communications than the people attending Pride. I understand the Crown's point that the distribution of the flyer must be seen in conjunction with the blog entry, perhaps on the theory that the readers of the blog were the real intended target audience, but in my view that is still not enough to get over the hurdle of the stringent mens rea requirement. After all, when he blogged about the parade, he did not post a copy of the flyer. Acknowledging, of course, that an attempt to promote hatred does not have to be well thought out or competently executed. I turn now to the police interview. Mr. Patterson argues that Mr. Whitecott lied to the police. Mr. Whitecott told the police that he obtained a photograph of the patient with the lesions from a medical website. In fact, as noted, the photograph came from a website, from the website called cutiedeadguys.net. 
Respectfully, I cannot agree that this lie, if it was a lie, is indicative of an intention to promote hatred. The transcript of the piece, uh, Beesla, and I, I'm quoting here, uh, Officer Beesla, I don't know where those images were obtained from. What okay. uh, Medical websites. Officer Beesla, okay, is there a particular medical website that you refer to? What caught? I believe it was the university. Yeah. Beesla, do you remember? What caught? No, I've had a, the pic, that picture for years, and it, it's been used in many contexts. I was also a public health nurse, health, health nurse uh, a home care nurse, to be specific. So, and that's the end of this transcript that I'm quoting. As Mr. Rosen pointed out, it appears that Mr. Wetcott may have been referring to the photograph of anal warts rather than the patient with lesions. I have my doubts that this was a lie. And if it was a lie, it was hardly a major lie. I do not accept that it is evidence of an intention to willfully promote hatred. Finally, it is not enough that, what, that Mr. Wetcott intended to create a controversy, a furor,